What is going on you guys? Kenny Valdez back at it again with another video. So in today's video guys, we're gonna head up to uh, I think Sarasota area to go look at a potentially junkyard 240SX. I got all my tools in here uh, in case I've been needing to strip out anything from it. Uh, it's a S13 coupe. So let's go ahead and check this thing out. Aesthetics. Damn, all up in my face. Why are you recording me? You ready to go look at this S13? More than ready. You woke me up in the freaking crack of dawn. Yeah. <laughs> what well, feels like it? I woke up like at, <laughs> I woke up like at 6 a.m. today for no apparent reason. But try to get me up to go to anywhere important. I guarantee you I won't get up. Try to get you up to go to work. That's the real struggle. That's important. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> let's get it, guys. this about three months ago and it was completely intact and I did not expect it to be still here <sighs> but this is what's left it was a full on full interior full exterior got everything in it but they took apart the dash had a full dash when I saw it <clears throat> three months ago had full interior full suspension but this thing is rotted oh my god Still got a bumper though. This rear quarter doesn't look bad. So if someone needs a rear quarter, it's here. But damn, son. This quarter panel looks like it has some rust, yeah. But the part that I need is right here. These brackets. Still got the K in it. All right, so I got my two brackets. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. Bye bye 240. If anyone's wondering, this 240 is located in Osprey, Florida. All right, so a couple days later, I've got the intercooler mocked up. I'm still waiting for the brackets to come back from paint. However, I did get the hoses on. So technically, I think I can bleed this system if I wanted to and make sure everything stays to temp. So, got the top hose on, the bottom radiator hose is on, tighten it down with some hose clamps, and yeah, I got, got the hose that goes from the overflow to the radiator going, and yeah, I'm just bored at this point, so while I'm waiting for the brackets to come back in, I think I'm just going to go ahead and bleed the system, and see how that goes. Alright, so I just came back from O'Reilly's, grabbed some... 50-50 coolant, some water water. Uh, how to go with this because they didn't have the Redline brand, so this should do fine. And we're gonna top this thing off and uh, lift the nose up and take out the two bleeder screws. There's one on the back of the manifold and then one in front of the manifold. So those are two bleeder screws that, that Arby's have, usually have. And yeah, let's get this cracking. Darling. Turn on the fans, 
on hot. Listen to this thing idle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off the fans. But listen to this thing idle. It's damn near perfect. Gotta love that. All right, let's put the fans back on. Got my blitz thing over here. It tells me the temps. So I think right around 80 degrees or 80 Celsius is operating temp right around there. As long as it doesn't go above 90. All right, so it's been idling for about 15 or so minutes and it stays at pretty much from 80 to 83 degrees or Celsius. Um, I opened both bleeder screws, topped off the coolant and uh, it seems like that's where it stays. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's okay for uh, idling for the RB25. So according to the forms, you'd want it anywhere from, I guess, According to the forms, anywhere from 80 to 86 degrees, uh, 80, anywhere from 80 to 86 Celsius is perfectly normal. So I think we're good. All right, just came back from the paint shop and my guy Howie just painted these flat black for me. I got the other one right here. So I'm not too worried about the color of this. I just needed, it. I just told him to throw black on it cause I'm gonna probably end up respraying the bay at another date so this will do just fine it'll match up with the radiator support perfectly so cool look who it is my guy esteban swap <laughs> that's good so esteban's here guys to uh help me fabricate help me fabricate these uh, aluminum bars for the intercooler so let's do it let's get it bracket made with my boy Estevan so this thing's pretty sturdy it's not really going anywhere um, so I'm happy about that I was deciding if I needed to do it on the bottom but this thing literally is not going anywhere so I think I'm just gonna leave the bottom brackets the way it is or not put bottom brackets but yeah 12 seconds later <laughs>
Celsius, which is great. guys so it is now the next day got some clouds in the sky but nothing too crazy i just want to go for another quick drive uh because yesterday i had a little bit of a boost leak issue it was like only gets like five pounds of boost right around there five or six pounds of boost um i did find one of the hose clamps one of the clamps for the intercooler piping was a little bit loose not nothing drastic but i'm wondering if that was what was the issue um but I'm gonna go for a second drive and see how it drives. So a little update, took all the plugs out. They are pretty bad, as you guys can see. So I'm gonna replace these. They look like they haven't been changed in a while. Changing them with the, well, I'm still going with the NGK Iridiums. Same stuff that the previous owner used is what I'm using. So gonna see how this works out and go for another drive. All right, so I changed all of the spark plugs, so they're good to go. Now let's go for a little drive. And yes, I know this knob is ugly, but this is a temporary one that I had laying around because the car didn't come with a knob. All right, so currently at racetrack, I'm gonna try to do, I'm trying to add fuel because maybe I'm not getting a boost cut. Maybe I'm getting a fuel cut, and so, I got some Lucas uh, injector cleaner and I'm going to fill it up with some fuel and I'm going to see what happens from there. So wish me luck. Whole $46 to fill up the 240. Sheesh. All right, guys. So. The video got cut off there, not too sure why or what happened on that last pull that you guys just saw, but it was still getting boost cut. I tried rearranging the intercooler piping around and it's still doing it. Added fresh fuel to it um, with injector cleaner, it's still doing it. Change the spark plugs, it's still doing it. I know my coal packs are good because I disconnected each of them while running. Um, when I disconnect them, they, uh, they surge in power, so... I know they're all working as they should, but I'm still getting this boost cut. I have no idea why right now. I'm gonna probably look on the forums to see exactly what other RB owners have experienced. Well, particularly in RB25, 
uh, even better if it's a Neo, I guess. But if anybody else had this issue, uh, comment down below how you fixed it. Um, it's just getting boost cut. Like when I give it more than a quarter throttle, it just cuts. Not too sure why. Can't really tell if it's boost cut or fuel cut. I don't know, someone else's experience with RB25s could let me know, I'd greatly appreciate it. Other than that, my search continues. Hopefully in the next video, I figure this thing out and we get this thing fully running. Um, you guys might have saw a sneak peek back there, but I got new fenders for this thing that I want to try out, see what they look like. This car runs and drives absolutely amazing so far. It's just, I'm getting that boost cut, so I gotta figure out exactly what's going on. Because just putting around in this thing, it, it drives phenomenal. I just gotta figure out why it's having that boost cut. But um, other than that, guys, this is probably where it's gonna end for today's video. I greatly appreciate you guys if you made it this far into the video because I know it's a pretty long video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a like, and I greatly appreciate it. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. I'm out. Peace.